The board on the left is the Talon F4. This board came out about three days after the Hyperlite F4 OSD came out, which is the update to the Hyperlite board that I designed. And it immediately became my favorite flight controller because right at that same time, I started designing and building frames that had space for the flight controller in the back of the frame. I really, really like this split apart stack design. And now I've even moved the flight controller to the front so I can leave the entire rear empty and exposed for caps and wires and whatever management. It's just so easy to access all my stuff when everything is split apart. And that's why my designs now all have this kind of structure where you can split everything apart if you like. And so this is the new version of that Talon F4. It is the same board with an F7 on it. The pinout has changed all over. The F7 that you're looking at here, it's, I didn't even know there was a smaller version of the F7, which is what you're looking at. It looks like it's the same size as the F4, which is kind of amazing. If you've looked at boards with F7s on them, you may have recognized that the F7 is kind of huge. Well, this one is not so huge, but it has all the same power as an F7. So you can look at the product page for the pinouts and everything. It does have six UARTs. However, I think only four of them are broken out and there's only two RX or TX pins, one on the ESC connector and one somewhere else. Um, I don't know, I haven't, I haven't soldered it up yet, so I, I don't really know. Um, regarding the performance, again, I can't comment. They sent it to me a couple weeks ago. I feel ashamed for not being able to put it in a quad. I just haven't had a chance. I'm also waiting on the actual production version of my own frame to build a bunch of quads with the various flight controllers and parts that I have with me. I have talked to a lot of people that have flown F7 boards, and they do say that it does perform a little bit better than F4 boards. However, I can't really comment on that and I can say that Betaflight doesn't actually use the power of the F7 just yet. I think they're kind of just beginning to. I don't know how they're going to use the power to do anything. It is a lot more powerful but we will see. There's a lot of F7 boards that are available now so they're generally considered a little bit more future-proof than the F4 boards so hope to tell you more about these boards in the future. But let's now talk about this quad here. So this is my main quad. It's running the, the um, F4 board, the Talon F4 board. These are the 2208 1800KV motors that I like very much with the GoPro and the ND filter on, on board. And now you are watching it fly. This is on the S3 prop. So what I'm flying right now is not the props that you saw. It's the S3 prop, the new Ethix S3 prop from HQ. So I talked to Zhang and he tells me that it's, it's about a 3.1 pitch but it also has some extra angle on it. I don't really know what that means. All I know is that it's a shallow pitch. <laughs> and um, yeah, it's the new prop that he developed and Mr. Steel had a hand in it and it has insane response. But how does it compare to the old 5x4x3? When I first flew this S3 prop, I immediately felt like I didn't even I didn't even pitch roll or do anything. I just touched the throttle and it went up and I heard the sound and I felt how the throttle felt and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is this is the 5x4x3. This is the same prop. Like, it sounds the same. It felt sort of similar. It had that same cr creamy throttle and that raspy noise and that raspy throttle when you give it in the range that it starts biting, does everything. So I was like really shocked. And the response is absolutely incredible. Incredible response. And as I said in the previous video about this prop, when the response is so amazing, it's kind of a double-edged sword. On one hand, it's really easy to modulate your throttle because you can actually, like, it's as if the entire control loop has dropped in latency. Like, you see what's going on in your video feed sooner almost because the prop responds so quickly and so accurately that you can respond in response to that <laughs> accuracy of the prop much easier, much quicker. It's just a lot easier to fly super smooth. And if you fly super quick and super agile like Mr. Steel does, then you got that too, because the response is absolutely incredible. Where it does lack is in the top end. It is a very shallow pit prop, and the top end does definitely suffer as a result. And because of that, I would recommend a little bit higher KV motors. On 4S, I would recommend really probably 2600 KV, maybe even 2700 KV. On 6S, I like it on the 1800 KV, but I think it can go up to 1850 KV, maybe even 1900 KV. At 1800 KV on my motors, on the 2208 motor, it does just barely begin to flatten out at the top end. I can almost just begin to hear it kind of in a dive. It is kind of a heavy quad at around 620, 630 grams, so it is kind of putting stress on the prop as well. 
I would say that the prop is probably tuned best for something like a 650 or under gram quad. I, I would assume so, just based on the experience of my own quad. But I haven't actually flown the glass nylon 5x4x3 in years, years, <laughs> years. And there have been many, many copies of the 5x4x3 ever since it came out, ever since it became super popular. Um, I actually forgot who made the 5x4x3, the original 5x4x3. I totally forgot the name of the company, but then Gemfan had a version of it, and then HQ jumped on board, and HQ started making it a tri-blade. I'm pretty sure HQ was the first one that made it a tri-blade, and then um, everybody else began to copy it because it became so popular, in part because of Mr. Steel and um, Final Glide. They were very popular at the time. This was the, their favorite prop, and this is the only prop that they would fly. However, it had a lot of issues. <laughs> And by a lot of issues, I mean one massive glaring issue. If you have flown this prop, you know that it is the most delicate prop in the history of anything we put on our mini quads. <laughs> like this prop, you could break it. I have broken it many times just tightening the prop. Like <laughs> you're tightening and the thing just cracks. And it's really annoying because it's so darn delicate. If you look at it in the wrong way, it will just shatter to pieces. If you touch the grass in the wrong way, if you have a hard landing, it has it has essentially zero durability. It has the lowest durability it could possibly have. But it does fly incredible. And that's where the hang-up comes in. I haven't flown this prop in a long time, but after flying a pack with the S3 prop and then flying a pack with the glass nylon 5x4x3, I was... I was taken back, first of all. I had like a, like a mind warp to like back when I first started flying. But it is so much better than even the S3 prop. And it's, it's incredible how this prop of four or five years old performs better than, arguably better, at least to my preference. It performs better than any other acro blade I've flown. It's, it's really, really remarkable. It has more bite when you touch the gas. It has incredible response as good or better than the S3 prop. It has amazing grip. It has it has fantastic speed. Not the highest speed, but it has fantastic speed. It does everything remarkably well, and it has better efficiency. I got about 30 seconds more flight on the Glass Island 5x4x3, and I think I was probably flying it a little bit harder than the S3 prop as well. So it does everything better, except for durability. The durability is absolute crap. But let's now take a close look at the props and compare the glass nylon 5x4x3 to the new S3 prop. Let me get them oriented the correct way first. Alright, so when we look at the blade, let's first look at the pitch. So very, focus the camera. very obviously you can see that the glass nylon blade has more pitch on it. Definitely has more pitch on it. That's very clear. And then when you look at the profile from the top to the bottom, you may notice that the S, the, sorry, not the S3, the glass nylon, if I get it lined up right, glass nylon, it's about right there. Glass nylon 5x4x3 has a little bit more meat on the blade too, like in the outer portion. The inner portion I don't really consider that much because it's such a slow spinning area, but this outer portion definitely has more meat on it. It also weighs less than the S3 5 by uh, the S3 prop. The S3 prop weighs 3.6 grams, the glass nylon 5x4x3 weighs 3.4 grams. That's just, a, I, I didn't even, I don't remember how good it was, but now I am reminded of how good it was. And so let's compare the flexibility. So I'm gonna flex this prop a couple times for you and we'll see if I can convey if this prop is stiffer or not. To me, it actually feels less stiff. And this is what I've also been talking to Zhang about because the prop material makes a really big, really significant difference to how the prop performs. And he has actually cast this prop in the new polycarbonate material and it just didn't perform well. It just performed awful. And it's really unfortunate because it really does feel amazing in the air. And it's, it's just so mind-blowing to me that even though this polycarbonate prop, when I flex the two, the polycarbonate definitely feels stiffer. It definitely feels stiffer. But the glass nylon prop just feels so much better in the air. So I, I mean, I'm at a total loss, total loss to figure out what on earth is going on. Zhang is going to, I don't know if I keep saying his name right or wrong. I think it's Zhang Zhang, I'm not sure. So if I'm offending somebody, I'm sorry. I just don't know how to say his name properly. But 
it's either Zong or Zhang. I'm pretty sure it's Zhang. Anyways, so he is going to be trying to tweak the S3 prop to see if he can get similar performance out of the S3 compared to the Glass Nylon prop. But the main difference between these two props is everything is actually the main difference. But more than anything, I feel like the throttle is just more. There's just more bite. There's just more control. There's more everything on the Glass Nylon blade. Also, let's look at one other prop. This is the Azure 6-inch blade. The 6-inch, uh, what's the number? 6145. 6145. So this is the Azure uh, 6145 blade, and Azure has, has made very few number of blades. They're doing it the way I wish all the prop companies would do it, which is just focus on one or two props only, and maybe focus on some materials, and that's it, so it's not super confusing. Anyways, this is their 6-inch blade. Um, I haven't flown it yet because I haven't built 6-inch quad, quads in a while, but this is their polycarbonate material, and this is their carbon mix material. When I first tried the carbon resin mix that they had in the previous version of their prop, I was also impressed by that prop as well. It, it was incredibly durable. It was the most durable material and it had better stiffness and it just felt way better in the air. So this carbon material is kind of an upgrade on that. It doesn't have that same resiny feel. It actually is incredibly it's gonna hurt me to flex it. Incredibly stiff, incredibly stiff. Compared to the polycarbonate version, which is super flim, not super flimsy, it's just much more flexible than the carbon version. It is just, it's it's wild stiff. And I've flown the five inch version of this prop, and it, it the only way to break it is if you kind of crack it on something. And that's really the only downside to the material. If you do hit like a metal pole or like a, like a solid wall or something, it will crack, but before that, it will maintain its rigidity, its form, its function completely until it cracks. It does not have flex, whereas a polycarbonate prop is gonna flex and then like just bend and it'll still fly fine and it'll probably even like flex out a little bit when you hit the gas a little bit. This prop will just break and it would just probably ruin your race. So maybe, maybe not a great race prop, although depends on the race, depends on the gates, depends on what you're, what you're racing. I just wanted to discuss the actual material of the prop. I think that this material is fantastic and I really, really, really wish that they would share this material with HQ. However, this material is heavier. This prop weighs 7.8 grams, whereas the polycarbonate version weighs 7 grams flat. So the material does weigh more, and that was the same case with the previous version of the material. It weighed even more than, than this as well. It was, it was even more dense, but it felt a lot better in the air. So weight seems to have something to do, after all this time with props, weight seems to have something to do with response, feel, control, all these things. I don't exactly know what. we've. Our props have gotten really good to the point that it's really hard to pinpoint what is and is not going on. And right now we even have three props from three different companies that feel super similar. The HQ 5.1 by 4.1 by 3, the Doll 5047, and the Gemfan 5149.9. All three of those props, to me, when I fly them on my acro quads, they feel pretty darn similar. It would be difficult for me to tell them apart. And that's pretty wild to think about because they are drastically different designs. Anyways, going back to this prop, I think maybe the, the ability to spin the prop also has a significant factor, a significant role in this response control kind of thing that we are trying to figure out. And it's possible that this blade just has a profile that is much easier to manage, easier to spin than many other polycarbonate, frame, polycarbonate props that are available. And maybe if Azure would team up with HQ and just cast this prop in their material, it would perform the same with much better durability. And that would be an absolute dream come true. I'm so sad to say that all the acro props that are out there, race props too. If this prop was durable enough to race, people would be racing with it because it has it has amazing grip. I don't know why. I don't I don't understand how this prop can be that much better than like everything else that I've flown. I I truly 
I know I'm kind of like exaggerating and you guys like to make fun of me for exaggerating things, but truly this prop feels amazing. It has incredible response, incredible grip, incredible thrust, really good speed. It does everything well and it's so sad, it's so depressing that we don't have a polycarbonate version that even begins to approach this kind of performance. And to me, it still looks better than all the other props. I mean, when I look at my quad with, this, with these props on it, it just looks cooler to me. Anyways, that's all. It was a very interesting test. I thank Mike Chin very much for sending me these props. He just, he has like a boatload of them and he just sent me a bunch of them. I wish, at a minimum, it would be nice if they made like a popo version of this prop so it's easier to just replace them when they break because they break really, really often. Anyways, thanks for watching. Please floss your teeth and I hope to have much more moving forward.